And I've told you many times, I don't know whether it gets through to you or not, but we as black people must get over this thing of looking at schools and universities as advanced vocational training institutions. How many people recall that I've repeated this time and time again? That the function of education is not jobs. That is not the primary function. Children and people are educated. The primary function for education is to advance the interests of a people and to protect their interests, to secure their survival. That the educational structures and institutions of this country are as a much a part of its defense, of its armed forces, as are, as are its soldiers. The bombs, the weaponry that this nation uses against other nations and intimidates other nations with develop out of the universities. The germ warfare, the chemical warfare, political, because some great professor is the head of this particular department, or they have illustrious names in the department, chances are you will never see them teach you in a class. The graduate students are on some kind of uh, assistantship will more likely be your teacher. Where are the brains and where are the professors? They're doing research. And often they're doing research on government grants for the government, for the corporations, for the other institutions in the society, and they are part of then the total system of domination of this country. Afrocentric education above all, and even beyond the teaching of African history and African culture, is preparing our children to defend the very lives of African people. It is a military preparation and a preparation for war. It is the means by which we will maintain our biological survival as a people. For if you do not survive, what does it matter if you teach reading to 100% of our children? Or they learn math well? Or they learn computer science? Or all the other things you think are important when your very lives are in the balance? And it is very likely that they will be snuffed out in the next 10 to 20 years. And yet we still continue to look at schools and colleges and universities as vocational institutions. And here we have then at the University of Maryland, long connected with the U.S. Army, by the way, hosting a conference on so-called genetic factors in crime. Breaking charge that uh, this meeting, which was canceled, was part of a broader program a violence initiative, a federal government research agenda, so that this program was only a part of a larger agenda. And uh, it was designed to move toward finding a genetic marker that would uh, supposedly identify children at high risk of becoming criminals and to develop plans to deter them through medication. And this is interesting <laughs> due to the fact that there's little or no real information that links directly in any kind of strong way or even in a mild way a relationship between genes and criminality. There's been no DNA segment that has been uh, discovered that codes for crime. When you think about it, the idea is ludicrous anyway. What is crime? What is, what, is, what is violence? What is violence? In other words, I'm asking this question because you have to do a linguistic analysis. There are all forms of what? Violence. There are many different types of what? Crime different types of aggression. Not all violence is necessarily bad. 
There is what we in psychology may call hostile aggression. But there is, there is aggression or violence that may be used in terms of what? Self-defense. Violence may be used to protect your children from attack. Violence may be used to, to protect the lives of other people. So now if, if we're going to get a gene for violence, for a type of violence, or in removing the gene for violence, if we were to name for every type of crime you can name, so that even when we change definitions of crime, a new gene comes into being that we're going to find related to that particular crime. And when we decide that certain other behavior is no longer a crime, will the gene which was coded for that crime disappear? Ludicrous. Ludicrous. I talk in Black on Black Violence about the structuration of crime. That crime follows the type of violence that we talk about, or crime, even its nature, follows the class structure and follows the skills levels of criminals. You see? Why is there so much so-called violent crime in certain segments of the society. Because when you look at the skills levels of the people committing them, if they were to commit a crime, that's about the only crime they could commit. If they were accountants, they would commit the crime of embezzlement. And still hundreds of thousands or millions because they have a particular ability or skill. And you'd be a fool if you were an accountant or in, uh, or in an SNL where you could steal millions of dollars and then make the public pay billions back and then hang out on the street and knock somebody out in the head. So here, here we have this crimogenic society that robs our people of skills and other means so that if they decide to, put, uh, to uh, participate in a crime, then the probability is that it will be violent by the very nature of the way the society has set them up in the beginning. In other words, the society even determines the type of crime you are most likely to commit itself. Okay? And then it tells you, you're violent. Teach me to be an accountant. I won't hit any more people in the head. I'll just rob them by books. Okay? And then they want to talk about white collar crime and, you know, and the other kind of collar crime. Come on, wake up. This has nothing to do with genes. It has to do with the nature. I've also told you about reversal, right? I mentioned the fact that in order for us as a people to be in the situation that we're in, we literally have to be turned backwards. We have to think backwards, behave backwardly, deal with the world backwardly. It's, it's necessary. This is the only way the system can maintain itself. Sometimes I say the best way to win an argument is to concede to your opponent. Okay, there is a genetic marker for crime. Let's now look at the criminal record of African peoples and European peoples. The record is clear. If there is a genetic marker for crime, when we look at the fact that the European has committed a crime against every people on every continent and destroyed millions of people, then that argues for his genetic criminality. And that argues then for us to medicate him and, and, and control it. 